Hey guys, welcome back to theme 5 of GCSE Geography, Weather, Climate and Ecosystems. This is lesson 13 in the sequence, Causes of Deforestation. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at, um, focusing on Brazil in particular, what are the areas across Brazil that are experiencing the highest rates of deforestation. So we're going to describe the distribution. Where are the areas mostly being affected by deforestation? How are they spread out across the country of Brazil in South America? What we're then going to do is focus on two of those areas and construct and analyze a line graph to compare the deforestation rates in two of the areas of Brazil that are currently experiencing um, loss of rainforest. And then finally, we're going to offer reasons for why deforestation rates are increasing uh, and the impact this is having socially, environmentally and economically. The impact element might actually spread into next lesson rather than this lesson. So if you go ahead a moment and pause the video, write today's title and then we'll get going. OK, so First off, just a reminder of where it is we're talking about so you can visualize what we're referencing. So we've got the continent of South America. You drew this sketch map last last lesson. OK, so you've got the outline of the whole continent. The green area is the Amazon rainforest. OK, and underneath here, you've got Brazil, you've got Peru, you've got Venezuela, you've got lots of other countries. All right. So it's this area we're focusing on. Now, the reason I've given you that first is because the next image I'm going to use um, it's a little bit difficult to make out what's what, okay? So I'm hoping you can sort of distinguish what I'm talking about. The boundary here, this is the Amazon rainforest region, okay? This light green area here. You can see that from the key, it says rainforest. And if you sort of compare it to the map I was just talking about, okay, to give you your bearings. So we're focusing on the Amazon rainforest area. Now, if you look at the key, the light green is rainforest. The dark green is areas where there has been deforestation of the rainforest. So particularly here, here, and here. Written in black are the names of the different areas of the Amazon. Okay. And coming off of certain areas are some annotations to explain why the removal rates in those parts of the Amazon are particularly high. OK, so here's a sort of enlarged version of that map. Now, I'm hoping you can read it OK. What I'd like you to do is in your books, answer these two questions. Just simply name the three areas of the Amazon that are experiencing the most deforestation. So what are the names of the three dark green areas? And read the annotations. A bullet point list is fine. Give me some reasons why deforestation is happening in those three regions. So pause the video here a moment. It's up to you whether you want to copy the question and answer underneath or whether you want to go straight in with a full sentence such as the three areas of the Amazon that are experiencing the most deforestation are. And then for number two, the reasons deforestation is happening in these areas include. And give me a little bullet point list. OK, or you can write, write the question down first. Entirely up to you. But pause the video here a moment and go ahead and do that, please. OK, so what I'm hoping you've picked out is we've got an area here called Rondonia. Apologies if you weren't able to read that very well. All right. The Mato Grosso, this area here, and Para, this area here. Now, if you notice the annotations, what they explain is from the 1990s onwards, Rondonia has seen massive expansion in cattle ranching. Why do we rear cattle? We rear cattle in this instance for beef. Why do we want more beef? Because there's more people on the planet, population growth, we want more food. If we come across to the Mato Grosso and Para, it tells you again, since the mid 1990s, the turn of the turn of the millennium, there's been huge expansion in the amount of land used to grow soybean. We're becoming more and more conscious in in our modern day lifestyles of vegetarian diets, vegan diets, of allergies, of meat consumption. And so soybean is a really popular alternative to supplement these sorts of diets. And so there's actually been removal of the rainforest to keep up with demand for soybean. Also in Para, 
you can see this annotation here, the dam has been built in the 1980s. Why do we build dams? Number one, to control and store water supply. Number two, to produce hydroelectric power for industrial growth, to power factories, to power cities. Um, in this case, for the smelting of iron ore to be used in construction and exports. So you've got energy production, water storage, soybean agriculture, cattle ranching agriculture. All of these things are linked to we need more food, we need more space, we need more materials, we need more electricity. And all of that links to one of the biggest challenges facing our planet at the moment, which is population growth. So what we're going to look at is the figures behind two of these areas. All right, we're going to use a little bit of numeracy. So we've got Para State in Rondonia and Mato Grosso. We're going to focus on Para and Mato Grosso. OK, so what I'd like you to do, these are real figures. OK, I sourced them on the Internet um, for deforestation rates from 2007 to 2013. So we're not even talking actually bang up to date. There's seven years of data missing here. So imagine what the rates might have looked like up to today. But this is the best, most reliable source I could find, um, even though it doesn't bring us up to date. The website that I got it from was was National Geographic. So I'm sh assuming it's reliable. Uh, so the Mato Grosso region and kind of that sort of central southeastern area of the Amazon rainforest. These figures, by the way, are in hectares. OK, so we've got 3,273 hectares of land lost in total across the Mato Grosso region of the Amazon rainforest up to varying figures up to 2013. And then I've got the same here for Para State in the more sort of northeastern region of the Amazon rainforest on our previous map. This wording, it's quite common in your exam now. OK. You won't be asked to draw a graph in Unit 1 or Unit 2, but in Unit 3, in your coursework exam, they will, it will be worded something like, for the data you have selected, draw an appropriate graph. What they're looking for is that you have the ability to tell what kind of data you're dealing with and therefore what sort of, sort of graph you should draw to represent that data. If this data was named data, um, our class's favourite pets, cat, dog, horse, fish. OK, that's categoric. Normally, if one of your sets of data is categoric, you're probably heading more down the bar graph or histogram route. In this case, both of our sets of data are numeric. OK, we've got the years and we've got how deforestation rates change across those years Two numeric. And in this case, continuous sets of data means that a line graph would be most appropriate here. Some of you might might have sort of cottoned on to that straight away. Remember, please, to label your axes. All right. So along the bottom, I suggest your X axes should have the years 2007, 2008 onwards. And then your Y axes at the side should have the hectares along it. Select two different colors, one line for Meta Grosso, one line for Para State. Plot your plots with crosses. Join them up freehand because this data is continuous and then ensure that your graph has a title. Use the title from the top of this slide. Make sure your axes are spaced evenly. All of your usual salt graph skills. Now, if you've got access to graph paper, great. But this is actually a relatively, in theory, straightforward graph to construct. So you're more than welcome to just use directly onto the lined paper in your books. Once you've drawn your graph, I'd like you to describe the trend shown on your graph. So one sentence for each region. Remember, when you describe the trend on a graph, what is the trend? Does it go up or down? And then quote figures from how much to how much. So, for example, deforestation rates in the Meta Grosso region of the Amazon have increased over time from. So the increased over time would be the trend from 3,273 hectares in 2007 to 12,987,000 hectares in 2013. Make sure you use the hectares unit. Make sure you quote the figures. Make sure you give the years and talk about the trend. Does it increase or decrease? So there's two tasks there for you now, please. Construct a graph. Make sure it's titled. All of your graph skills are accurate. And then a couple of sentences underneath to describe what your graph is actually showing. Analyze what it actually shows, please. You don't need to copy out the data table. All right. Just use it straight off of this slide. So pause the video here a minute and go ahead and do that, please.
Okay, so in this instance, it was quite obvious just from the table of data, we can see the figures are increasing. We knew what the trend on the graph would be, really. Um, in some, in other cases, you would need to draw the graph to be able to visualize the trend um, of change over time more easily. Sorry, here's my email <laughs> pinging in the background. Um, so our graph shows us that in both of these regions, um, deforestation rates are increasing quite rapidly. 2007 to 2013 and still now into 2020, the rates are going up. Last lesson, we talked about how important the rainforest is. It's a natural flood defense. It's a carbon sink. It provides us with resources, materials, minerals. You can get natural products from it for medicine. So why on earth is it being cut down at this accelerating rate? Let's take a look. So if you prefer a subheading with bullet point list, then do that. If you're like me and you quite like spider diagrams, then pop down a little bubble, causes of deforestation. You won't need more than about half a page worth of space maximum to write around it. OK, so set that up quickly for us. Okay, so if you just use what we know already from that map we looked at at the start, we've talked about cattle ranching, we've talked about soybean production, there's hydroelectric power dams been mentioned there. There are a really wide variety of drivers, of factors behind removal of the rainforest. Um, these are just a few that we can list if you write these down as we go along. The timber itself, of course, we use wood for building, we use wood for furniture, we use wood for paper and cardboard and so on and so forth. And Brazil can make a lot of money from exporting these products. It's an LIC, remember. So cutting down the timber in the rainforest is a really get rich quick shortcut. Cattle ranching, we touched upon this already. A cattle ranch you're talking, a small one is about 70,000 hectares. And that would maybe be home to about 4,000 head of cattle. Now, Brazil is one of the world's largest exporters of beef. From beef exports alone, Brazil made $4 billion worth of profit last year. And that money can go into investing in healthcare, in education, in infrastructure, like reliable electricity and internet connections for the Brazil cities. So you can't blame them. They're just trying to make money for their economy. Locals that live in the rainforest are trying to get jobs when they themselves probably haven't had access to, to education. They can barely read and write. Cattle ranching, cutting down trees. These are manual jobs that they can access to earn a living to provide for their family and improve their standard of living. So this is why deforestation is so difficult to stop. We understand that it's a big deal. That it's a problem. But when you're living in the rainforest and you're just trying to earn money to support your family, it's going to be very, very difficult to convince them otherwise. Growing soybeans. We touched on this again already with changing diets in the West. Healthy diets move to veganism, vegetarianism, allergies, trying to reduce our meat intake. Now, soybeans, they're not the devil. OK, there are very sustainable ways to grow soya, very sustainable ways to grow palm oil. You've probably heard about palm oil um, in the news quite a lot. It's another um, leading cause of deforestation. But these products... Yes, they are actually very useful at trying to reduce the amount of meat that we consume, therefore reduce the amount of cattle ranching and therefore protect the rainforest, because in general, they are farmed very sustainably. But if not kept an eye on, then vast areas are cut down to, to keep up with demand for soybeans, for palm oil, for things like that. But on the whole, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of sustainable sourcing of soybean and palm oil going on. Mineral mining, coltan gold, silver, um, there's all sorts that we get from the rainforest that we use not only in, in jewellery but also in, in road building, in construction, in all kinds of industrial capacities. Coltan, uh, we touched on it last lesson, it's a, it's a metal, it's an ore that you can mine from the ground that's very, very good at 
conducting communication and electrical signals. There's tiny little bits of it in our mobile phones, um, satellites and things like that. Uh, military grade weapon systems use coltan. So very, very, very expensive, very good way of um, earning money for Brazil's economy, exports of coltan. Urbanization. Urban is a built up area. Isation, the sort of growth or spread. Urbanization is the growth and spread of cities. More services, more roads, more homes, more businesses, because there's more people. So cities in Brazil are spreading and they're having to cut down rainforests to make room for that. Agriculture in general. I've mentioned soya, cattle and palm oil in particular. But agriculture in general is cutting is responsible for the removal of massive swathes of the rainforest. And what happens then is you just end up with little patches of forest left and it's surrounded by farmland. So animals can't get between these patches to breed, to share food sources, share water sources. Um, and it has a massive impact on on biodiversity. Oil drilling goes without saying when this goes wrong you're going to get huge oil spills in the middle of a rainforest. so even if you're nowhere near a river which is very difficult in the amazon there's rivers everywhere if you have an oil spill the minute it rains that's going to get washed into the nearest water source that the tribes and animals rely on and one river flows into another everything links up in the amazon and the damage can be extremely widespread palm oil production like i mentioned earlier what is the connecting factor in all of these Money, money, money. Brazil's an LIC. The majority of its population are uneducated. All of these are a quick and easy way of boosting Brazil's economy so that it can become more developed. You can't blame them for wanting to do that. And all of these are a way for lesser educated, illiterate, rural workers in particular who've never been to school to earn money to support their families and hopefully afford to send their children to school so they can get a better job when they're older, maybe break the cycle of poverty in some of the LICs. So this is why it's so difficult to stop. Like I mentioned, it's all to do with money, all to do with development, all to do with jobs. But at what cost? What environmental cost? OK, so if you haven't got those down yet, just pause the video here a moment and go ahead and get those down in your book. Okay, so sort of what I've touched quite a lot upon already really is the the underlying factor here. Why are deforestation rates increasing? There's more people on the planet than ever before. It's thought that by 2050, we're going to hit 9 billion. Now, there is talk of actually the population is starting to level out in many of the LICs that were experiencing exponential population growth. Uh, so we may never hit the 9 billion, but we're already at nearly 7.5 billion. We are past what we call the carrying capacity, what this planet can naturally support. More people means we need more food. We need more medicine. We need more resources. We need more space. We need more towns, cities, so on and so forth. And that means expanding into areas that were previously occupied by natural ecosystems, natural environments, including the rainforest. Hence, population growth is such a challenge because there isn't room for everybody. And the damage it's causing trying to create that room is, is a real concern. And that's what we're going to look at next lesson. So this was where is the deforestation happening the most? What is causing it? Why is it happening? Next lesson, we're going to look at the effects. What are the impacts socially on people, economically on jobs and money and environmentally, of course, on the ecosystem, the social, economic and environmental impacts of deforestation at different scales, local, national, global We'll look at that next lesson. But that was lesson 13. Relatively short and sweet. Job done. Well done. And I will see you for lesson 14 whenever you feel like it.